Hey everybody and welcome to Dungeons and Drams. Today we're going to be building a dungeon using ChatGPT. Now this is going to be a little bit more complex, so if you haven't seen the other videos I've done on ChatGPT, you might want to check those out first just to learn the nomenclature and the concepts behind defining objects, etc, etc. But it's really not that hard, so I think you'll be able to follow along, and in the description I'll have any of the major prompts that I use. So let's go ahead and build ourselves an undead dungeon. First things first, we've got to talk about our prompt, right? And if you don't care about the prompt or if you want to just check the description later, that's fine. There's chapters below. Skip ahead to where we actually start generating the dungeon, but I'll do this as quick as I can. So first things first, we've got to talk about who I am and what I'm trying to do. I am a dungeon master playing fifth edition and I need to make a dungeon, right? Easy enough. It's going to get a ton of information from that. Now, I consider a dungeon to have the following information. Number one, an evocative name. Now, I don't want it to just be like the skeleton cave. Even though, frankly, as a player, I would absolutely love to go in the skeleton cave. But still, you want it to be like, I don't know, the crypt of a thousand cuts or something silly like that. It's going to be more evocative, right? So next, a description of the location speaks for itself. Now, the theme, this is one of the changeable pieces. If you don't want to do undead, let's say you want to do fey or you want to do like mountain. Um, you could do whatever you want, and I'm going to just do Undead because I think it'll be the most relevant and relatable to this video. So next up is rooms. How many rooms are there? Now, when we talk about rooms, we could easily replace this with something like if you want to do a five-room dungeon or an eight-room dungeon, you just change it to that whatever number you want. I like to leave it open because I feel like it has a little bit more creativity. It might spit out 30 rooms, though, and I don't necessarily want to run a mega dungeon, so we'll see. But what is a little bit more complicated are the floors. And there's a key term here. These can be above or below ground that I think you should put if you want to do this. Because otherwise, I found that it tries to build a tower more often than not. It doesn't always think to go underground. But it's up to you whether you want it to or not. You could specifically say there are no underground pieces to this. Or make every floor above ground. All right. Next, appropriate challenge for four level six players. You can adjust this as you want. I have not found a whole lot of luck with specifying which classes they are. are. Uh, the dungeon should be non-linear and allow for multiple pathways. This is important because otherwise you just have a linear dungeon, which maybe you want that. That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In this case where I'm building a slightly larger dungeon, I want there to be multiple ways to get to different rooms. All right. There should be options for role playing. I don't want this to just be a slog of going through an undead uh, cavern. I want this to have maybe some items to find that have cool role play things, or maybe a ghost wants to talk to me. I don't know, but this kind of gives it a little bit more freedom to do some cool stuff. All right, the second half here each room should have a description that could be read by the dungeon master. If appropriate, list each uh, which monsters would be in each room. If appropriate, list which treasure would be found in each room, and then I give it some options for what those could be. I have seen it go a little off script, so if you don't want that, you could say only include these items, but I just gave it some ideas. Um, and then I ask it if it understands. So let's go ahead and make sure it understands. It's going to confirm that it understands the request that I've made here. However, in this case, it's asked me a question, and it asked me how many rooms and how many floors do I want? Well, I don't want to tell it. I want it to come up with it itself. So I'm actually just going to say, I want you to determine the floors and rooms. Now, while this is generating, I want you guys to consider subscribing to the channel. This is something I'm really enjoying doing as far as the ChatGPT thing, helping Dungeon Master. So if this is something that you're interested in, not only subscribe to the channel and like it and all those usual YouTube things, but if you have a cool idea for something that you'd like to see me kind of expound upon, then throw it down in the comments and let me know. Um, but if you like the video, you know, the best thing to do is subscribe. It really helps. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead. This is done chunking through its uh, its its dungeon here. Let's see what it came up with. So it calls it the Crypt of Shadows. Um, it's going to be a three-floor, nine-room dungeon. It's a decaying underground mausoleum. It's stone walls etched with ancient runes and symbols. Flickering torches cast dancing shadows on the damp moss-covered corridors. Blah, 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 blah. Like, it's it's describing an underground crypt. This is cool. I just don't want to waste your time. All right, so its theme is undead. It's got a appropriate challenge rating, supposedly, but let's see what it came out with. Nonlinear design with multiple pathways and options for role-playing. Okay, now let's proceed with the descriptions of each room, including monsters and treasure, where appropriate. So... It's got the entrance hall. I'm not going to go through all of these, at least not to start with, because I want to show you how you can really define these. This isn't the end of the video. 
So, the entrance hall is a grand chamber with a massive stone door partially ajar. Cobwebs hang from the ceiling and a thick layer of dust covers the floor. A few ancient suits of armor stand as silent guardians, or sentinels, guarding the entrance. So there's going to be two animated armor in here and a dusty old key hidden beneath a suit of armor. So, I want to check something out here, an animated armor. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure what the challenge rating of that is, so let's see. So looking at D&D Beyond, this is a challenge rating 1, which is kind of perfect. Alright, so if we consider this as being an appropriate thing, you've got four players, all level 6, two CR1s just guarding the entrance. That feels totally appropriate to me. We are going to go back to the entrance hall in a moment here, and I'm going to give you a little bit more which is going to be pretty cool. You're going to like this. Um, but next, let's go to the burial chamber. We'll, we'll actually pick one of these rooms, and I'll show you the example. We'll pick whichever one we think is cooler, coolest. So burial chamber. The burial chamber is a solemn room with rows of stone sarcophagi lining the walls. A sense of reverence fills the air. The sarcophagi show signs of recent disturbance, as if someone or something has been searching for valuables. So it's going to have some wraith in here. Uh, it only says one, so that's fine. Treasure is going to be a broken amulet, a silver chalice, and a hidden compartment containing a vial of holy water. Now that's pretty cool. All right, so let's uh, let's just take that one and let's do a little bit more. So as I, as a dungeon master, when I am designing a dungeon, if I were to use this, I would possibly start drawing. But more so, I would be like, well, okay, you told me that there is a uh, compartment containing a vial of holy water, and if I would bet if I keep reading, it'll tell me, like, maybe it's a good idea to use it here. But I want to know more. Um, let's try this. So I'm going to ask it within location two to give me some of the names that would be on the sarcophagi. Because your players might ask. They'll say, hey, I want to look around at the sarcophagus, and I want to know what's on there. All right, so it looks like we've got a royal family here. Sarcophagus of Lord Cedric Blackthorn, Lady Evelyn Ravenswood, Sir Aldric Ironhelm, and Lady Serafina Nightshade. Okay, cool. Um, now let's do this. I'm going to combine something I did from a previous video, and I'm going to ask it to generate me one of these NPCs so I could know a little bit more about it. I'll put this down in the description below so I don't have to go through it, but I have this definition of what I consider an NPC, and I put that in here because now I want to make sure it understands what that is. And we'll probably use this later anyway. So it confirms that it knows what it is. All right, excellent. So now I'm going to grab one of these names. I want to know more about Sir Aldrich Ironhelm. So let's say, tell me about the NPC Sir Ar Ar uh, Aldrich Ironhelm that was found in the burial chamber. And let's see what it says. So he was a dwarf. Uh, he is, was brave, stoic, honorable, etc., etc. Um, he has a secret, so he harbors a secret guilt for a past failure in protecting his homeland. Maybe that's why he's here, which haunts him. He seeks redemption and wishes to make amends for the lives lost under his watch. So maybe he shows up as a ghost. We'll have to go back up to the description and see what happens. Um, there's some quest hooks, there's etc, etc. Alright, uh, he resembles Aragorn from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Interesting. Okay, so that gives me a little bit more about him, and if one of the players is like, hey, do I know about this Sir Aldric Ironhelm? And, eh, roll a history check. And they roll a natural 20. Well, here's a bunch of stuff about him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, maybe they've heard about his, uh, his lifelong uh, grievance for those people that he lost, etc, etc. Alright, let's go back up to our description of our, of our dungeon here. So, after the burial chamber, we have the Crypt of Whispers. Now, this is a smaller and dimly lit, ethereal whispers echo throughout the room, making it difficult to focus. Faded murals on the walls depict scenes of sorrow and loss. Now, there's going to be a ghost here, which has a tattered journal detailing the tragic tale of lost love. Now, maybe you just adjust that to be, uh, what's his name, Aldrich or whatever. Um, and it's his ghost, and maybe you talk to him. Maybe you don't fight this guy. And this is like the third room in the dungeon. It's They've fought the, the, uh, the armor. They have fought a wraith. Now, give them some roleplay. So this is a cool way to kind of build this. Don't depend on ChatGPT to give you everything, although you certainly could. Uh, you're still a DM. Figure it out. Make up something cool that really works, because then it'll stick in your memory better. All right, up next is the Hall of Shadows. And this this will be the last one that we read until the, the very end. So the hall stretches ahead, shrouded in darkness. The wall seems to breathe with an otherworldly presence. Strange symbols are etched into the floor, glowing faintly with a ghostly light. Oh, there's three shadows in here, which if anybody's fought a shadow, they're, they're, uh, 
definitely a, a trouble. A small silver key mysteriously radiating warmth. Now, what's that about? That's interesting. Now, when I have done this in the past, um, as far as practicing for this video, some of these silver keys, like it'll say, oh, this is going to go with, uh, you know, room number seven as far as the locked iron gate that's going to be there. So definitely consider using these keys on things. Um, but let's go ahead to the very end. So the final confrontation. This is the tomb of the necromancer. The final room houses a massive stone tomb adorned with dark signals, uh, symbols. The air is heavy with necrotic energy and a powerful aura surrounds the room. The sound of incantations can be heard, growing louder as the party approaches the tomb. So in here is a necromancer and an undead minion. The necromancer spell book is your, is your treasure, a black gem pulsating with dark magic and a mysterious map leading to an undis another undisclosed, uh, undiscovered dungeon, sorry. <laughs> a lot to read. Um, and your treasure here is going to be a necromancer spell book, a black gem pulsating with dark magic and a mysterious map leading to another undiscovered dungeon. Well, that's pretty cool. However, I want to know more about this necromancer. Um, so why was the necromancer buried here? Now, as I type that, I realize that maybe the necromancer is not actually dead. I kind of breeze through a lot of that, but that's okay. It gives a whole bunch of stuff uh, to go with what I asked anyway. So the Necromancer, I'm not going to read this all, but the Necromancer was buried within the Crypt of Shadows for a specific reason tied to the dungeon's lore. Here's a possible explanation, and it goes through a bunch of this stuff. And that's actually, I mean, that's four paragraphs. So that's giving you some lore here. Um, let's, let's be a little crazy, right? So let's go back up to our definition of the dungeon uh, as far as the what it spit out. So we've got the Forgotten Library. Um, it's in a state of disarray with books spread, scattered across the floor, tattered pages, blah, blah, blah. There's a banshee in there. I don't want there to be a banshee. Um, I want to say, let's redefine the forgotten library. I don't want any monsters. I want a riddle uh, with a treasure. Here's an updated version. So the forgotten library's chamber, it's basically the same thing, but... Soft rays of sunlight filter through the small, dirty windows, casting a nostalgic glow uh, upon the room. And as the adventurer steps into the Forgotten Library, they notice an ornate pedestal in the center of the room. Resting upon it is an old leather-bound book with gilded edges. The book beckons them closer, and as they approach, a riddle etched into the pedestal catches their attention. And it reads out this way. Now, here's the thing. It didn't give me the answer. And this is something else I'm actually going to make another video about, how to properly do riddles with answers and how to make them thematic. Now, I can ask it for the answer here. What's the answer to the riddle? Question mark. The answer to the riddle is as follows. Uh, shadow magic. Um, so that's totally fine. In realms of magic deep and wide, I hide a treasure none can find. Seek the essence of a forgotten art where shadows dance and light departs. Whisper the words of ancient lore, unlock the path to riches galore. Within these pages, secrets lie. The treasure awaits the one who's wise. I don't know that anybody's going to guess treasure uh, shadow magic from that. So let's just say this. Uh, generate a new but easier riddle with the answer this time. <laughs> so let's see. In the darkest night it can be found, a flickering flame without a sound. It dances and glows, mysterious and bright, guiding lost souls towards the light. What am I? A star. I think that's okay. I think somebody could probably get that. A flickering flame without a sound, dances and glows. Yeah, I think that's totally fine. Um, it's not necessarily thematic, though. But like I said, I'm not going to go into the riddle part here. I'll do that in another video. Either way, you could see how you could tailor this. I'm like deep into this already, and I've barely touched the surface. If I want to, I could spend all day designing this dungeon using ChatGPT. And I could tell it that I don't like one of the rooms. I could tell it I want it to replace with another room. But here's another cool thing that you can do. Generate a map of this dungeon and describe how each room connects to each other. Now, it's going to tell me it can't, but then it's going to do it anyway. <laughs> so there you go. It's not the most pretty thing, of course. But unfortunately, as a text based blah, 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 I'm unable to ge generate AI visual maps, blah, blah, blah. But it does give me this. So you start at the entrance hall, you go into the burial chamber. There's going to be two different exits here. One goes to the Crypt of Whispers, one goes to the Hall of Shadows. And now you've got two different lines. And this is great. They all uh, culminate at the final confrontation. Now, people are going to probably want to go back and check out the other rooms, but that's up to them. It also gives you text here saying... Uh, how they connect, just so it's a little bit more clear as well. 
I pop back up here to the dungeon, and I see Hall of Mirrors, and it has a monster called a Mirror Wraith, which... That's not a thing, at least not in D&D. You've got a Wraith, of course, which is going to be a CR5, which is going to be pretty hard. And there's going to be two of these here. So that's that seems like too much for my group. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to use another object that I've defined, and I'll put this again down here. Uh, but you can see my other video I did on how to create better monsters. So I'm going to say all this stuff talking about what a monster is. Uh, do you understand? Yes. It's going to say yes. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so now you defined a monster called a mirror wraith. Use the creature definition to create this creature at, let's go CR3, at challenge rating three. All right, so it's going to spit out all this stuff about a mirror wraith, which these prompts that I've defined here, man, I, if you're not using them, like, you should. At least give them a shot. I think you're going to love them. Um, the one thing I would say is just don't be don't be too afraid to use AI for your DMing. It can really, really help. We've got enough work to do as it is. Having this is like having a friend that you can bounce ideas off of. All right. So in this case, we've got this Mirror Wraith. Uh, it's an otherworldly entity that lurks within mirrors big shock able to emerge into the material plane to haunt and torment its victims i like that it embodies the theme of deception illusion and the reflection of one's fears that's a cool concept you could really really play with a uh, lot of lot of role play experience there make it look like what is it called a uh boggart from harry potter the thing that just kind of looks like whatever you're the most afraid of i like that uh it re appears as a distorted and shadowy figure its form ever shifting and ethereal it mimics the appearance of those it encounters but with a twisted and unsettling aura its eyes glow with a malevolent light okay so it could look like this too um i like my idea better but you know do whatever you want the mirror wraith serves as blah 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 descriptive text so you could you could read this as you gaze into the mirror the reflection begins to ripple and distort suddenly an ominous figure emerges from within its features mirroring your own but twisted with a malevolent aura the air grows colder as the mirror wraith steps through, ready to confront you with your deepest fears. Now, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, it's got some weaknesses, lore and flavor, reward. Um, and, uh, yeah, actually, this is pretty cool. It gives you a triumph over your own fears and uh, an opportunity to recover a fragment of the mirror it emerges from. Frankly, I think if it was, if I was really leaning heavy into that whole overcoming your fear thing, anybody who beat their own wraith, I'd give them inspiration. I think that's a cool concept. Uh, Role-playing opportunities, so you can go through all of these things. Either way, it's got the stat block now that it defined. It's got an AC of 14, 65 hit points. That's feeling a little bit more appropriate, uh, especially if there's a couple of them. I think that's totally great. Uh, special traits, ethereal jaunt, shadow mimicry, and illusionary, uh, illusory reflection. Now, I could also ask it to define what those abilities are. Um, that's for that other video, so go watch that. Now, as far as the dungeon goes... I think we've gotten most of what we want to get out of here. And as I've said, any one of these is adjustable, but let's go one step further. I'm not loving the items that it came back with. I, I think they're fine and they're good for roleplay, but I want some magic items. Like I want something chunky that I can really reward them with for killing the necromancer. So what are some appropriate and thematic magic items that I could reward my level six players with for defeating the necromancer and i do specify the level again because i find that it gets a little bit uh confused with the the level it might think it's the necromancer's level or something else so mention the level and let's go ahead and submit that and see what it comes up with these feel pretty appropriate to me the soul fire blade is for a level six it's a magical longsword it's not a plus one nothing like that so carries a faint flickering flame within its blade once per long rest the wielder can channel the power of the trapped souls to deal additional radiant damage on a successful hit against undead creatures that makes a lot of sense maybe this thing was buried here in the crypt with the necromancer as a way to prevent the uprising of these undead or something like that like you know this is here it wards off evil, it's warding off undead. Apparently it didn't work very well. <laughs> but either way, that's appropriate. Now the necrotic ward amulet, it gives resistance to necromantic uh, spells. Um, spirit collar's robe, like you could go through this whole thing. Just make sure that you specify what level you want it for. Now this is gonna spit out homebrew stuff. I'm gonna ask it to spit out more official content. 
So you've got Flame Tongue, Cloak of Protection, Staff of Healing, Ring of Spell Storing, Amulet of Health. These feel like maybe a little bit powerful, but maybe not. I mean, level six, just make sure not to give too many of them. Like Flame Tongue is a rare, but that's appropriate for level five or above. Just it could get to be a little overpowered if you loaded them up with like five of these. <laughs> so just be smart. We've successfully built a dungeon using ChatGPT in what, like maybe a half hour or so. And this is such an easy way to ideate on something that you already have an idea of. You can adjust any of those parameters that I gave you to give them a hard value. Like I said, if you wanted to build something that was a little bit more thematic to where you currently are, maybe you are in a mountain, maybe you are uh, on the ocean, or maybe you're under the ocean, you know, have it build something like that. I'm sure it will do a very, very good job. Undead is just a little easy to, to think about, and most of us have fought in an undead crypt of some sort. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe if this is something that you're interested in, and again, let me know in the comments if there's concepts that you'd like me to explore. I have a pretty good knack for this thing at this point, and I think I can make a really good video with some really interesting things for you to think about. So, let me know, and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers!